Okay guys, we are starting on the back of your next page, which should be page 19. We'll zoom out a bit so we can see this. Instead of an objective, we're just gonna put a title on this because honestly what we're doing today is review of material you've learned in earlier grades. We are titling this Equivalent Fractions and Mixed Numbers. Okay, we're gonna start with finding two equivalent fractions. The fraction we're starting with is 14 sixteenths or 14 over 16. What are some ways that you guys know we can find equivalent fractions? Yeah. Dividing. We could reduce this and divide it, couldn't we? What could we divide this by? Seven and eight. We could divide by Four. two. Oh, uh, but it's equal to seven. And whatever I do to the top, I have to do to the bottom. 14 divided by two equals seven. 16 divided by 2 equals 8. What's another way we could find an equivalent fraction? Yeah. We can multiply. Let's use 2 again. Only this time, instead of dividing by it, we're going to multiply by it. 14 times 2 would be 28. 16 times 2 would be 36. Are you feeling comfortable with me saying this is review? Yes. Yeah. Oops, yes it is. Thank you for your correction. That would have been wrong all day long. Bad. <clears throat> okay, again, this is review. I'm sure you guys have heard the term simplest form before. I want you to turn and talk real quick. What do you remember about simplest form? I'm hearing some really good math language out there. You guys are remembering this. We want to simplify as much as we can. And when we do this, we're doing like we did up here with this example we're dividing. Simplest form is usually getting it down to the, the lowest form we possibly can. So if I gave you 24 over 36, and I mean 36 that time, not 32, okay. <laughs> um, I can divide that in a couple of ways. And I heard some comments about trying to find the biggest number to divide by. Yes. Like when I look at that, I see they're both even, my thinking goes to two. But I want to see if there's a number bigger than that that they have in common, because that'll make my life easier. Yes. Six. Let's try six. 24 divided by six would be four. 36 divided by six would be Okay, there was something bigger that could have worked because this is still not simplified, is it? I can still divide this by 2. And I get 2 over 3. Now I want to look back and see what factor that they have in common did I not see when I first looked at it. And I can use these two to find it. What is 6 times 2? 16, 12. It's 12. Could I divide a 12 out of 24? Yeah. Could I divide a 12 out of 36? Yeah. So this is a great example of what would make my life simpler is if I'd found that to begin with, mm -hmm. right? Because then I would have just divided by 12, and I would have had 12 divided by, or 24 divided by 12 is 2, 
36 divided by 12 is 3. But both ways, did we end up at the same place? Mm -hmm. This one just took a little bit more work. Mm -hmm. OK. Now we're going to do what's called determining whether fractions are equivalent. And if there should be a calculator near you, if you could grab one, please. Pass the tray around so everybody has one. And I should put a question mark there because I am asking a question. Every time I start one of these, I'm asking the question, are they equivalent? Now, our book writes it like this. I don't like to do that. I like to write it like this. And I put a question mark here. Because that's really what I'm questioning. And when I see the word and, I want to add things together. And we're just checking to see if these two are equivalent. So I'd prefer it if you guys used an equal sign with a, a question mark. Now there's a couple of ways to check this, but I'm going to show you guys my favorite because it's going to get us ready for math. We're going to do a lot in seventh grade. It's called cross multiplying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if I cross multiply these two, if they both come out to the same number, then they are equivalent. What is 6 times 12? Mm -hmm. And what's 8 times 9? So the answer is yes. So they both have to be the same number? When I cross multiply, if I get the same number, they are equivalent. You can do also use it for finding missing numbers. Let's try this one. Is 15 over 20 equal sign with a question mark? Is it equal to 20 over 24? We're going to multiply the two across from each other and see if we come up with the same number. For 15 times 24, I got 360. Yeah. Yeah. And 20 times 20 is not going to equal that. Yeah, it's going to be a nice 400. So this one is no. OK, and finally, take a look up at the title that we put on the top of your page. Equivalent fractions and what? Yeah, honestly. In seventh grade and above math, we don't use mixed numbers very often. We usually use improper fractions. But sometimes problems will come to you in one form and you have to convert to the other. I know you guys have done this in the past. We're just going to review, OK? OK? So mixed numbers and what are called improper fractions. But actually, especially in algebra, we use improper fractions more than we do anything else. We leave them that way. So let's use the example 21 over 4. We do divide it. So off to the side, I want you to think 21 divided by 4. And when I look at that, 21 can be divided by 4 five times with a remainder, right? So this is going to equal 5. What do I get when I multiply 5 times 4? 20. So what's left over? The 1 over 4.
So the fraction is the remainder, and this is the whole number that got divided, right? So if we're using division to go from an improper fraction to a mixed number, we're going to do the opposite when we're trying to convert a mixed number into an improper fraction. 4 over 2, I'm sorry, 4 and 2 thirds We kind of go around this by doing 4 times 3 and then up here we add 4 times 3 is 12 plus 2 is 14 and we keep the denominator of 3 that feel like review? Okay. So I'm not going to be seeing you guys again until Friday. And I'm going to give you a few problems to practice on your contract. And I didn't ask you to bring it with you. So just put this on the top of your binder paper for now. Add it to your contract later unless you have it with you. We're skipping part of chapter 2. We're moving from 2.6 to 2.9. And on page 120, I want you to practice numbers 1 through 20. And I'm going to expect you guys to bring this to class with you on Friday. Okay? Good.